Hey DIYers, for some of us it's springtime. For others, spring is just around the corner. You know what that means, don't you? It's time to beautify your landscaping. And there's no better way to start than with a good lawnmower. Now here's where I'm gonna advise you to spend a little bit of money. Buy the best lawnmower that you can afford. Now that doesn't mean necessarily to go out and buy the most expensive, but buy a really good, reliable lawnmower. Like this one I have here. This is a Honda lawnmower. It's got a twin blade. It's called a three-in-one system. I'll get to that in just a little bit. I really don't remember what I paid for this, but I got this almost 10 years years ago outside of I think I changed the spark plug once just because I thought it needed to I check the oil every time before I use it I try to change the oil at least every season but let's be realistic it's about every two seasons put gas in it every once in a while take the hose to the underneath and clean it and that's really all I've done and it never fails me year after year to start now I don't even put any gas stabilizer or any additives in the tank at the end of the season I just leave it in there and like I say it never fails start. When I went to go buy this, the thing I wanted is a rear bagger and it has that. This particular model has a bag function and a mulch function. And all that means is, is if you put it on the mulch function, it doesn't come into the bag, but there's a second blade down under there that hits the grass a second time to mulch it up into small pieces. Depending on what kind of grass you have, you might like that. For me, I don't like that. It's got adjustable wheels, which most all of them do. Steel frame or housing. And this particular model is self-propelled. And I'm a little bit lazy, so the self-propelled does come in nice because my particular grass here where I'm at in the Houston, Texas area is St. Augustine. And in full growth, it's very thick and you need something to help push through it. And this does it. And in the 10 years I've had it until recently, I've had zero, zero issues with this. And then just lately, the self-propelled part went out. But that's for another video. Get you a good mower. You need a good mower. Try to avoid going to your Walmarts and getting your $50 mower. I don't even know if there is such a thing anymore. You won't be sorry. So even if you have a crappy, cheapy mower, you're still going to have to change it. Well, you're still going to have to put gas in it. You're still going to have to do all the same stuff. The other thing in your mower, as far as where you set it, going to vary on your preference and the kind of grass you got. Like if you got Bermuda grass, you're gonna cut that stuff really short. Like I say, me, I have this St. Augustine. I've got it set to about two inches because in full growth season when it's nice and green, it's stuff's like walking on carpet after you mow it. And I love it. I bag because I don't wanna to have to worry about clumps of grass to rake up later. Do yourself a favor and get you a good mower. And where would you be if you didn't have you a good weed eater to go with it? And again, here's another time I'm gonna tell you, invest a little money, buy the best one you can. This is a still. I bought this the same time I bought this mower. I have had zero, zero, zero issues with this thing. It has never failed me to start every season. I don't empty the tank. I don't put any preservatives in it. Nothing. I don't even think I've changed the spark plug in this. If I have, it was so long ago, I don't even remember. This particular model is a gas and oil mixture. It makes it a little bit of a pain, but that's okay. I don't know what I paid for it. I bought it 10 years ago, but let's say again, 400 bucks, 40 bucks a year, 10 years. Can't beat that. Now, I will tell you this particular model, and I think most of them come with a shoulder strap, but I got rid of it because I don't like it. It came with a guard that goes down here, but you see I've taken it off. The reason is, is because they've got a little cutter in here. So how this particular one works, and probably most of them, is you hit it on the ground, it causes this little button here to push, and because of it spinning when you got it going, it causes the string to come out. Problem is it keeps it cut short. So if you do that and you get an extra long piece of cord come out, it cuts it off, and so that's all wasted. For me, I wasted more than what I wanted, and two, I wanted it to be a little longer. So I got rid of this after half a first season. And if you buy one that has a string like this, you're gonna have to have replacement. I just think I got this at uh, Home Depot. I just got a big old spool of it and I've had this for probably nine years. I haven't gone through all of it. Nice thing about weed eaters, some of them you can get with attachments that got steel blades on them for edging. As far as changing the string out in this, it's very easy. It's got two little holes here on the side where you push in. It releases the cover, pushes in on these, give it a twist, and out it comes. Very easy. To re-spool this is very easy. I just pull out a big old long length, fold it in half and cut it. It has on the back which direction you need to wind it. Inside here it has those little grooves. And basically all you do is take your cord, set it down in that groove really tight, and just wind it up the direction that it tells you to. Couldn't be any simpler than that. Push it back in, pull your strings to the side, put your cap back in. Just like that, you're ready to go. Because let's face it, unless you got just an empty lot to mow, you're gonna need your good weed eater. Cause no matter how hard you try, your lawnmower's just not gonna get up against the house. It's not gonna get along the fences. It's not gonna get, in my case, the sidewalk. It's not gonna get along your raised flower beds very well. And when you go to do around your trees, 
it just doesn't cut it. You need a good weed eater to do all that so that when you're all done, you got that professional looking lawn care. And another reason in my case is I have in-ground sprinklers. I gotta have that weed eater to get the grass around the sprinkler head so they stay clear so that they'll work right when it comes time. I don't know about you, but I like to weed eat first. That way the clippings and everything from the weed eating will go out into the grass and when I come behind with the mower, it'll suck it up and put it in the bag and I don't have to worry about raking. So moving on to our landscaping tools. These next tools don't have to be very expensive and they don't have to be very sophisticated. And that is just something to pull your weeds out with. I got two different versions here. I have a little forked tool that I use to get weeds out and a little hand spade. As far as pulling weeds, they make some fancy little deals that you, you stand on and push down over it and it cones over it and you pull out and out comes your weed. If you don't need that, if you want to get it, go ahead. And actually, if you've got one, let me know how well it works. Does it work as well as those commercials we see? How do these little tools work? Now, I'll tell you, the best time to do this would be after a good rain. And the reason is your ground would be wet and when you pull, you'll get all the root out. But like for this particular weed here, it grows out of a center stalk. And if you can just get a hold of the bottom of it, and grab out it comes these are very easy to pull out these i don't mind a little side note get you some sort of kneeling pad to do this because otherwise it's going to tear your knees up quickly but here's a good weed to use this little pulling device with one it's kind of stickly and kind of hurts sometimes when you pull it and two a very typical one that it breaks off when you try to pull it because the roots are so deep and basically all i'll do is just take this spade down alongside the roots and loosen them up and pull it out. To use this little tool, it's pretty much the same. You just find the base of where your weed is, run this down along the edge, give it a little tug up, and out comes your weed, root and all. But let's face it, nobody likes pulling weeds. It's no fun, it's not glorious, it's a pain, but it's gotta be done. So before we move on to our next tool, let me know down below in the comments, do you do your own yard work? If so, do you enjoy it at all? Or do you have somebody come in and do it for you? Either way, let me know. And stick around to the end, I've got a little bonus tool that you might wanna get. And your arsenal of landscaping tools wouldn't be complete without something to trim your trees with. Unless you live in a brand, brand, brand new house, has no trees, I'll just about bet everybody has a tree or two in their yard and they're gonna have to trim it. I got lazy and didn't do it last year, but my thought on trimming the trees is if I can't walk without it hitting me, it needs to go. I got three different tools here. Actually, I got four, but we'll go over these three first. I got a small little hand one for small branches. I mean, it'll cut this. Got two different sizes of these trimmers here. And the difference between the two is basically how thick of a branch they can cut through. Now, what you see hanging down here, both of these will do. But to cut this branch here, these are too small. Whereas these should cut right through it. So it don't have to be that hard and trim your trees up. Now, say you're not tall like me and can't reach this high. Well, that's not a problem. I got you covered. So this little instrument right here, this nice little thing has a hook right here and this rope cut these branches. Got a saw on the side for bigger ones that are up high that works pretty good. This happens to be a telescoping one. I can reach pretty far with this. If it'll hook into here, you should be able to cut it. And one thing to keep in mind is the blades on all four of these items can be sharpened so that they cut at their best potential. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, just get a chainsaw. Well, you could, and I have one. What I'm doing, I think that's a little extreme. Well, unless you're cutting down the whole tree. As you see, trimming the trees doesn't have to be that difficult. Alrighty, you weed eated, pulled your weeds, mowed your grass, got your trees all trimmed up. The last two you're gonna want is something to spread out your weed and feed or your fertilizer. Cause I mean, to have a nice lawn, you've got to feed it with some fertilizer and weed killer out like in my case. And down here in the Houston, Texas area where I'm at, we got fire ants. So you got to put granules out for the fire ants. Now you can get a couple three different varieties here you can get this push one like this it comes in two varieties this one here is a spin variety as you see down there they also have them as a drop where it just opens up and it drops out i like this handheld spin version here myself really nice you got a riding lawnmower you got one you can pull behind i'm sure but depending on how big your yard is it'll depend on what you got i've got two different ones and honestly most of the time i use this handheld one there's no need to be intimidated by these it has right on the back of every one of them what your settings are like this one has a setting eight and a half for the drop four and a half for the spin version all you got to do is look at the back side some of them will get so fancy as to list this particular spreader like this is a speedy 3000 or some other versions they'll list them on there now a lot of times when you go to pour this out of the bag you'll have clumps like this not a problem just go along and, and smash them up because the spreader itself won't do it now to set this particular model you just spin this little knob here you get to the desired 
mark you want, there's four. Come back, there's a line that comes across that makes it four and a half. Now the thing to remember when you're doing this is not to have any overlap. You wind up having overlap, which you'll see as the grass gets green and grows, is you'll have strips where it's greener than others, and that's because of your overlap. And it shows you a diagram of this on the back of the bag. Depending on what type of spreader you have, you gotta be cognizant of how far it lays the granules down, and then just try to come back and barely hit the edges so you don't have any overlap. And for these spin broadcasters, we'll also determine how far it goes, how fast you push it. I especially like using this smaller one to do the little bit of grass between the sidewalk and the road. And that bonus tool, actually I got two bonus tools. First one will be a leaf blower. Now they come in a couple different varieties. This happens to be an electric. You also get them as a backpack that's gas powered. You don't have to get anything fancy. Again, I've had this, oh, I've had this 15, 18 years. It's nothing fancy, it's just a Toro. Biggest thing I was looking for is the max amount of air movement that I could get for a reasonable price. This also has an attachment that goes on the bottom. For those of you that have leaves every fall you gotta rake up, you can suck them up in there and it'll mulch them up. This is a handy little tool to have. It sure beats sweeping everything. I mean, as you see, I can use it to blow out my garage and get all the leaves and grass and stuff blown out of it. I use it to blow off a lawnmower. I'll use it to get all the leaves and stuff off the driveway. I'll go down along the sides of the driveway and blow the grass and leaves out of the little divot there. I use it to blow out the front entryway. Heck, I even use it to blow off the dirt and dust off my truck. So this is a nice little bonus tool if you want to get one. And the second bonus luxury, I'll call luxury tool, would be this edger right here, this electric edge. And it's just what it is. It's got a blade right here. Set the depth of how far you want it to cut. And basically you'll go along your uh, driveway or sidewalk and it'll cut the grass off. This is a nice little luxury tool if you want to get one. You don't have to. You can use your weed eater like I did. If you're looking to spend a few bucks and want something, you can get this little luxury item. And with these five tools, there's no reason you couldn't get a professional looking landscape and maintain it that way. And if you like seeing videos about tools that you can use to do DIY stuff, click this video link right here. And just remember, don't think about it, just DIY it. Till next time, happy DIYing.